Hi, Colette Florido with CRW Network, and I am here at the Florida Medical Cannabis Conference. I'm here with Joshua, who's with the organization Veterans for Cannabis. Tell us what you do there and why this organization is making a difference. Uh, I'm Joshua Linney. I'm the Director of Web Development and Fundraising with the Veterans for Cannabis Foundation. Uh, we are a national a nonprofit that advocates at the state and federal level to get veterans access to cannabis. We work on policy to try to do that from the top. And then at the ground level, we have boots on the ground that are trying to get recommendations and cards for veterans to get them access. And then when we restore that quality of life, we try to get them purpose with job training and, uh, and hands-on OJT certifications, things to get them returned back to the workforce. So not just about educating or getting them the, the plant, but actually in how to use this plant and get back into life. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's critical. Um, the Cannabis isn't going to be a silver bullet, and we don't want people to think it's going to be. Yes, it can definitely help you manage your day-to-day -day symptoms. It can help you treat the conditions you're suffering from and being prescribed massive amounts of pharmaceuticals at the VA for which you have no option. But we don't want you to think that somehow if you try cannabis and suddenly your life isn't perfect, that suddenly you've done everything it's going to take. Absolutely right. not. Right. What we're trying to do is make you understand that there are things out there other than the pharmaceuticals being distributed by the VA that will allow you to regain your life control of it and then get back into functioning every day yeah. so that you can do other things, add non-pharmaceutical options to your treatment of cannabis, uh, other modalities to help you get your life back on track. And then when that's over, if there's something in the world you want to do, if there's a career you want to have, if there's education you have, experience you already have, we'll help you find jobs in that field. If you don't know what you want to do, if you're not sure you want to be a security guard, if you think you might like cannabis, we can get you some OJT. We're working out programs with the dispensaries in Florida where we can do shadowing and drop dreaming. So if we get somebody in who thinks they might want to be a grower, we can take them in for a day and let them shadow a grower in one of the MMTCs. Then they go, you know, I think that's what I want to do. And we go, okay, we'll get you over this class. We'll get you certified in cultivation. And then a week later, they're like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then you set these guys up for success because if we get them excited about the industry, and we go in and they apply for a job as a cultivator and they don't get hired or they get hired and they fail, we've set them up for failure. But if we get them introduced to something and they go, you know, the cultivation was cool, but, you know, I really like the product formulation. Okay, well, go on and shadow one of the techs for a day. Sure. That's where it's at. That's what I want to do. Then we find out where their, where their, where their passion is, where they're going to be a good fit before we set them up for failure again. Right. Brilliant. I mean, it's a great opportunity for them to explore um, and find that purpose that is their next uh, their next act. You know, um, coming back as as a, a veteran, um, and and we appreciate all that you guys do. It's it's hard. It's a hard transition. So how is um, using cannabis helping them aside from going into that path? I mean, what's stopping that in the first place? I think we know the obvious, but why why are we moving this trend? Now, Okay, well, it's one of the things we find with veterans is that once they get back from the military, no matter how long they've been in, from guys who've been in two years to 20 years, the separation from the military leaves them feeling lost, abandoned, hopeless, uh, no purpose. They don't have a place they fit. And here's the thing to remember. Cannabis is a brand new industry. We're on the very precipice of the start. It's the next 20 years of medical, of recreational, of retail. So if you did two years in the military and you're not sure what you want to do and you come out and you get your life back, there is a whole world of opportunity if you're still in your 20s for cannabis. If you've been in the military 21 years and you got out and you're lost, you could do the next 20 years in cannabis and not feel lost ever again and only do one more thing ever that you have to that can also not only medically return quality of life, but can physically and financially return your purpose of life. So we don't want them to think that cannabis is simply just a medication or simply something they're going to take to use to forget about symptoms or to manage symptoms temporarily. It's not masking, and it's not a, it's not a, it's not a fix-all. It's not a cure. It's not a silver bullet. It is something that will help you get your life back to a manageable state so you can find a way to repair it without dying from the pharmaceuticals that our VA is financing the opiate epidemic with. Now you're talking about the VA and I think that's the, the, the pinnacle of why some people still aren't using it and truly could benefit from it. Um, what's the obstacle and what do we have to do to overcome that obstacle? I think one of the things that's important is that we need to let veterans know that if they want to get access to medical cannabis, it's not going to let them violate their disability or their access to medical care. 
Um, I have veterans who say, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to lose my concealed weapons permit. That's not true. Well, I'm not going to do that. If they take away my disability, I'll lose my house. That's not going to happen. Well, if they do that, I'll take away my, they won't give me chemotherapy for my cancer. That won't happen. They may deny you some of the pharmaceutical opiates, some of the narcotics when you're using cannabis. Well, what you'll find is that's a scare tactic and they don't know what else to do. Legally, they can't continue to give them to me, to you, but if you're medicating them effectively with cannabis, you won't need the pharmaceuticals and that's what they don't tell you. And the other part is the VA has now opened it up and you can look online at this. The VA, you can Google it. The medical marijuana is accepted by the VA as a topic that they can openly discuss. They're no longer allowed to legally discriminate against you or threaten your benefits. And they're allowed to open the discussion. The problem is because these doctors are educated in Western pharmaceuticals, they have no idea how to have the endocannabinoid conversation with veterans in a way that's effective and allows them to educate the veterans and themselves so they can find an effective solution. So we went into the VA at the top. We went into, I went into the Bay Pines VA. I talked to the director of education. Uh, and I asked her if I could go in and disseminate information to let veterans know there was access to medical cannabis. Right. And she suggested maybe I take it to the top. She said, I think you need to educate our providers. Because right. now that they're able to have the conversation, the problem is they can't. Right. So every time I'm at the VA, I mention to these doctors that if they want to sound educated, if they want to be able to have that conversation in a way that's appropriate and doesn't make them seem un and, and ignorant, then let us come in and bring the education to you you need so that you can have that conversation with the veterans and actually give them information that will save their life and doesn't make them feel lost and you feel worthless. I mean, it's not their fault. It's not our fault. Let's just come together and find a solution together to fix the problem. There's enough of the blame game. All we want to do is... No, and we don't blame anybody. We don't blame the VA. We don't blame the veterans. We don't blame. We just want to find someone who can help us get to a solution. We're going to evolve. This is the way to evolve. How can people in this? So we got a lot of people here at the Florida Can Medical Cannabis Conference who are either um, physicians or they are um, uh, services or they're patients. So what can somebody do to help your community um, to either get the word out or to offer the opportunity to shadow? What What can they do? Well, there's a couple of programs we have. Um, if you're a veteran and you want to give with an organization, find a veteran group that fits your alignment. Find one that's like-minded. Find one that you can relate to and get involved with them. We have um, programs going on. We have our Can Heal program with Boots on the Ground. We're giving away recommendations and ID cards to veterans in 10 cities all over Florida every month. You can go to our website, vfc.foundation forward slash Can Heal, C-A-N-N-H-E-A-L. Uh, and enter your information. We need uh, boots on the ground to help us organize those events in those cities. Uh, we need people to meet with lawmakers. We need uh, legislators to be con contacted. We need commissions and city councils and governments and cities where uh, dispensaries have been banned to be brought in education and open up the discussion to tell them why legalizing medical cannabis in their county will improve the quality of life, reduce crime, and, re and, and lower the amounts of arrests for illegal drug use. This is a, 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 mis a misconception within the industry that this is going to draw crime and drug abuse to our communities. This is the exit drug solution to our opiate crisis. There is no, no factual basis for calling cannabis an, a, a, a gateway drug. It is an exit drug out of the opioid epidemic that plagues this country that are it's killing our veterans at a 50% higher rate than any other demographic. And all you'd simply have to do is legally give us access to take this plant and we would save the VA a hemp load of time and money. Right. Absolutely. Now, I already know what that 22 stands for, but we should make sure that everybody else out there does. What's the 22? So every 65 minutes, a, v a veteran dies, and that's an old statistic. It's now up over 50. Uh, we have guys that are dying every day, and not because they're using drugs, because they don't have access to cannabis. They're dying from the pills our VA forces us to take by law, and if we don't take them, then the VA tells us that we're not following the law, that we can lose our benefits, we can have our disability doc, we can lose our we can lose our, um, our medical care. These are all things they're doing because they can't give us access to this plant. But this plant would save lives and money and it would be a cheaper, lower cost, easier solution than anything else they're trying to do. So one more time, what's that website where they can find you? You can find our uh, whole hemp oil product at vfcusa.com. It's great for treating PTSD and chronic pain. We own the DNA to our hemp, so you get the same reliable, consistent medication every time you order from us. And you can go to vfc.foundation, that's Veterans for Cannabis, Victor Foxtrot Charlie.foundation, 
and look up our uh, calendar. We have events there, our Can Heal program where we're giving away recommendations. We have sponsorship opportunities. Uh, we'd love for people to get involved. You can look me up on Facebook. It's Joshua David Linney, or you can email me at Linney, L-I-N-N-E-Y, at bfc.foundation. I always reach out. I always call people back. My cell phone number is 941 357 6097. If you're a veteran, if you're a civilian, if you're a patient, if you're a provider, if you need help, if you need someone to talk to you, if you have questions, if you can't find the answers, reach out to me, reach out to Veterans for Cannabis. If we don't have the answer, we'll put you in touch with one of the op- these groups, who, uh, p- p- people who can provide you with it, because we just want to get patients uh, the ed- education they need to decide for themselves how to medicate properly. That's amazing. He's giving you his cell phone to reach out to him. You are not alone. We can get help. This is a great solution. If you can help this community, be a part of it. This is Colette Florido and Joshua from Veterans for Cannabis, and this is CRW Network. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Cannabis, brought to you by CR World. To keep up with the latest in CBD and cannabis-related business, be sure to subscribe to our show.